Good morning, all my Dharma friends. I always hope and pray all of you physically healthy, mentally happy, particularly, you know, always mentally happy. First, I really want to say good morning for everybody. <clears throat> Among the uh, true hope, hope for physically healthy, hope for mentally happy, I always, you know, believe all of you mentally becoming more happier. Because we have been studying Dharma for many years. All the study studying for Dharma is mainly for enhance our positive thoughts and subdue the negative thoughts. So when we study Dharma, any Dharma book, books, so we must think, oh, I'm going to study how to reduce my negative thoughts, how to enhance my positive thoughts. Particularly, we need to think, so when you study, when you're reading a Dharma book, I am learning, I am studying, I want to know how to control uh, all my negative thoughts, particularly anger, hatred, and attachment, particularly the headed. So normally people are, you know, quite okay with the attachment, but if the attachment is so strong, it is bringing a lot of problems, the inner problem, then external problem, outer problems. When the headed is doesn't matter, it is strong, it is weak, it is very weak. It is always produce, always give rest, you know, give rise, suffering yourself. And slowly, so you want to take action to defeat, to harm others. Even though sometimes we really hate, you know, we really don't like, you know, particular thing in our room, in our home. And finally, you want to throw the things, or you want to break, you know, the things. Somehow, so when we, you know, absorb our daily happiness and suffering, most of, almost 100%, all the suffering, almost not 100%, the almost, you know, most of the sufferings is arise due to anger, attachment, ignorance. Sometimes we have a certain problem is based on misunderstanding, miscommunication. The misunderstandings, the miscommunication, the problem which is we have is it, it is quite easy to you know, like a clear the problem, clear the misunderstanding. So when we have a problem or suffering due to the attachment, anger, hate it. Until we don't control our, uh, those negative thoughts, there's no way we can solve the problem. Therefore, at the beginning of our study, in our daily life, beginning of our study, beginning of, of our practices, we must think, so I'm going to do this and that, this practice mainly aim to control all the negative thoughts, only aim to enhance, you know, develop the positive thoughts. So if you are very, you know, serious about these two actions, action for reducing the negative thoughts, action for increasing or develop, uh, developing or enhance your positive thoughts, then within a few weeks, you know, you can feel, oh, I am, I feel I am more 
happier person. You can feel, oh, somehow I become more easy to let it go. So at the beginning, it is so important to have a proper motivation. Then within the positive thoughts, some positive thoughts is very useful for in our daily life, but it not going to cause to you know liberate yourself, liberate for you know, liberate others. Then there's another you know lot of positive thoughts. So some other positive thoughts, which is very important to liberate yourself, but it cannot be caused to achieve Buddhahood. That means in our life, we have a, you know, like a three aims to achieve. First, want to happy within this lifetime. So happy life, happy, you know, have a good friends, good, good family, good health. It's also kind of positive thoughts. Second, so when we reflect in our life, in our daily life, particularly, Oh, most of you are Singaporean. If you compare, you know, like Singapore with other countries, the Singapore is a very, the country is, everything is a very order, very clean, you know, very easy to access everywhere, very easy to get things, you know, very quickly, but still we feel, you know, you know, we are not happy. I am not happy. Then, so what is the cause you not to be, you know, happy? Because you are only aim to achieve the, uh, the samsaric happiness. The samsaric happiness is a very, you know, like a temporal happiness. Is look like the four seasons. When the summer come, everybody feel very happy. You know, the flower is, is blooming. You know, fruits are growing. All land, the landscape become very greeny. Then when the autumn starts, we you know the flowers going to dry, the fruits going to drop, all the leaves going to drop. Then we feel we miss the summer. But doesn't matter how much you miss the summer, the autumn will come. Then when the you know, autumn comes, so we wish to have a you know the, the summer season all the time. It cannot be. Then after autumn, autumn, then there's a winter, then the spring is really changing every year. Likewise, the samsari happiness is changing every moment. So morning you are very happy with your family, friends, your job, your food, you know, you are the physical like pleasure things. You are very happy in the morning. Afternoon, you are very upset. So having happiness, you know, achieving happiness needs a lot of causes and condition. One cause cannot put us really said, you know, the great happiness. Having the emotional or mental suffering can be caused by very simple trigger. A simple condition can give you very strong, you know, very deep, you know, imbreable sufferings. So which one is more easy to have the happiness and suffering. Of course, it's more easy to have suffering, not easy at all to have happiness. Then the samsara happiness is a very temporal. Therefore, of course, living in samsara, living as a human being in the samsara, we need the samsari happiness. But we should not just, you know, satisfy with the samsari happiness. We must look more than, we try to achieve more than the samsari happiness. Then there's a second type of like a positive thoughts. 
which is renunciation, which is, you know, wish to get rid of all the negative thoughts. Then you can see, uh, you, you know, it is very important to cultivate renunciations. And also in the past, I said many times, there's a lot of, you know, many people has a lot of misunderstanding about renunciation. The renunciation means uh, you don't, you, you know, you don't, don't need anything. No, it is not the meaning of renunciation. Of course, in order to survive, we need the physical food. We need mental food. So we need job. We need house. We need money to pay for the electricity bill, the water bill, the medication, the school fee, college fee. We need money. Also, we need, you know, friends and family. Also, we need a cars and so and so. The renunciation doesn't mean we don't need anything. Whatever we have, you know, we just throw away and, you know, go, you know, stay in the cave. For example, in Tibet, Tibet history, so uh, the founder of the Kagyupa lineage, Lama Marpa, he was lay person. He had wife and children. He lived as a just, you know, uh, lay person family. But he has a, a great renunciation, bodhicitta, realization. Then finally he became a Buddha. And also the founder of the uh, Kadampa, which is Dromdumba or Dromdumjavi Jumne. He was purely lay person. He took only lay person vow. But he has the, you know, like a family and house and <coughs> so and so, but he generated renunciation. Then in the Gelugpa tradition, Lama Tsongkhapa, Lama Tsongkhapa, he's a full audience monk, but he did, you know, a lot of kind of the society uh, kind of uh, uh, social work. For example, he, you know, uh, rebuilt a lot of monasteries and temple. And also he, you know, established a lot of monastery, built he in a lot of monastery. But also that time, Lama Tsongkhapa, he needs, you know, workers. He need like a, that time there wasn't cash. He needs like a silver and gold and jewelry things to build the temple, to build the stupa. But he has a, he was very pure monk, he has a great renunciation. Then what does mean renunciation? Renunciation means we need a strong aspiration, strong intention to, you know, free from the samsara. Yes, we need the house, but we always wish to free from this uh, samsari world. Then, plus, if you do meditation, you know, on the Four Noble Truth, then you're going to achieve liberation. You liberate yourself. This also, you know, another types of important, the positive thoughts. Then, the most important, you know, most important, very practical, the positive thoughts is bodhicitta. So when we, when we say, you know, studying Dharma is for enhancing your positive thoughts, I mean, it doesn't mean always be positive, be positive. Be positive is quite easy. Everybody can be positive, but it doesn't mean you are really, you know, generating positive thought. It doesn't mean you are really enhancing your positive thoughts. This means there's a three types of positive thoughts. This means there are three types of achievement. Right? So the, the precious garland is, is the teaching to how to enhance your positive thoughts 
living as a you know family lifestyle having husband having wife having children having business having office having a job still you can be pure practitioner therefore when you read from beginning to end so and master nagarjuna taught the teaching to the king how to practice the dharma how to look after you know his kingdom and the people who live you know around him so this teaching is very stable for everybody very particularly very stable very important teaching for the lay person for example some of you are you know boss in the office you have a, a stop work for your company somebody you run a restaurant so you are the owner of the restaurant so you have a some you know few stops few workers so in a one hand how you take care of your business how you can control your uh, stop or work workers in the other hand how you practice the dharma therefore the dharma and practicing dharma in you know having kind of the this kind of uh, the kind of uh, the samsari activity there's no contradiction if you know how to you know act for the worldly activity there's no all your daily works maybe somebody you have a simple job to clean the toilet you know, clean the restaurant collect the you know the uh, chopstick and bowl and tea cup and <coughs> spoon from the table put in the uh, the the area also you can think i'm doing this job to benefit all these people who come for eating or if you are cook you should think okay i'm cooking this food i'm uh, i am cooking the delicious food to enjoy those people who come to the restaurant but the money will come therefore renunciation there's a you know lot of misunderstanding how to generate renunciation so the precious garden is very important text very stable should stable you know text for the people who have a you know the worldly lifestyle then uh, so we will start the class for first we do some revision <coughs> let's see the text yeah okay precious and then i have a list okay, here <clears throat> the 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 sentence uh, the stanza number 2 56 is a revision make sure you fully you know understood the meaning 256 the stanza number 256 just as you are intent on thinking of what could be done to have yourself so we everybody even though it is the very simple very ordinary insect also they are thinking you know they have a very strong intention how to uh, you know how could be done to have myself is a very common for all sentient being now here's a different is so you should be intent on thinking of what could be done to have others so so when we say you know, when we you know when we talk about you know generate great compassion 
everybody simply visualize all sentient being, then generate uh, great compassion is very easy. But in order to think about how to, you know, how could be done to help other, first you think how I could help, you know, those people who always, you know, live around me, your brother, your sister, your uncle, auntie, nephew, nieces. Just think about, you know, how I can, you know, how could be done to have this, my family, you know, who live around me. Then slowly you can think how I can, you know, could be done to have the rest of the people who live around your condo, your area. Then extend all Singapore, and then, then extend, you know, Malaysia, Thai people, then slowly all parts of Asia, then, then all parts of the rest of the world. So right now, what we, you know, what we can do to benefit others, what, how, what can we do? We cannot do much because we ourselves is <coughs> very simple, ordinary person. We don't have us, you know, so many things to, you know, give offer to others. There is a very important, he, Najan Nagarjuna said here, if only for a moment, for example, if somebody will ask, ask you a question, I cannot do anything to benefit others. I cannot help others because I don't have anything. I'm not educated. I don't have a lot of powers. I don't have a lot of energy. How I, you know, could benefit, how I could done to help others? The answer is here. If only for a moment, make yourself available for the use of others. Even though you don't need to give your house, you don't need to give your cars, you don't need to give your money. No, you yourself, you know, available for the use of others. Then how they can use me? There are some millions of millions of millions of, you know, limitless sentient being. I'm only one. I have a very tiny, tiny body, very small body. How I can, you know, have others? How, you know, I, I, I could be available for use of others. Then look at, just as earth, water, fire, wind, medicine, and forests are av available for all. Therefore, the four elements plus the medicine is available for everybody. Therefore, you need to think, you know, you just imagine your body, you yourself trans <coughs> transform into air, water, space, medicine, and wish, you know, all sentient beings to use my body. Even during uh, uh, therefore, forests are available to all. So you could be imagined like a forest. You could imagine you are like earth. You could, you can imagine you could be like a fire, air, water, medicine. Also, you can just imagine you transform in, as a doctor, very professional doctor can be cured any kinds of sickness. Just visualize. Is also, you know, actually, you know, slowly can benefit others. Even during the seven step, merit uh, measureless as sky, in, in generate bodhisattva, in, in generated, is generated in bodhisattvas without attitude is to give all wealth and away. Therefore, you know, generate the bodhicitta. When you walk around, you just think, you know, visualize you became a forest. All sentient beings enjoy the forest, flower, fruits, in the grass. If you give to those sick, to those seeking, girls of the beauty, wealth, adorn, you will thereby attend through the uh, Retention of the excellent doctrines. This also, you know, practicing how give things to other. 
then so when we give things to other also when you visualizing you know you things to give in other the most important you need the you know the love compassion lovingly give to beggars warriors and uh, glittering clothes ornaments perfumes garland and so and so whatever we give give with the you know sense of love and compassion give lovingly then when we give what should we give what what we should not give what to be give what not to be give this is very clear here if you provide facilities for those most you know the provide who lack the means to study the doctrine this is is this is there is a no greater gift than that generally you know we can provide all the facility particularly the person who has the emotional suffering problem that moment if you give very nice advice you know nice teaching the teaching the advice is the most of the greater gift to the people why we can bear the suffering of hungry thirsty cold sickness so and so but when we have a strong emotional problem in the deep we have a very deep you know emotional problem is always feel suffering for you know 24 hours until you know we died the physical suffering can be comes and goes and comes and go is never stay there they are as a permanent therefore giving advice giving teaching is the you know best gift to benefit others even giving poison to those whom it will help but do not give even the best food to those whom it will not have if you think or oh, this poison is really can benefit to these people because some people really for example let's say you know we have us kind of this <coughs> this day many people taking certain kind of tablets you know so we thought the certain thing the person cannot survive if you have a this kind of tablet then the person can be you know feel happy then is okay to give even though you have a best food in your hand the food is very good very nutritious food if you give the food to other is not helpful the mission or give just as it is said that it will have the cut to cut a finger bitten by a snake so the subdue says that if it have others one should even bring temporary discomfort right they say the, the snake bite in your thumb then is is better is much better to cut the finger to save less of the finger save for whole your body therefore what says uh, subdued you know the which is the buddha says if it have others one should even bring you know discomfort I mean for the short time is feel this you know comfort feel very you know uneasy if you think is a benefit for this people that you must bear sudden suffering sudden discomfort you should respect most highly the excellent doctrine and is proponent you should listen the reverently to the doctrine and also impart it to others yes so we must respect all the uh, teachings all the dharma books also we must respect all the proponent all, all the teacher who teach dharma respect and also we need you know, we must have a you know strong mind to you know pinpoint the faults and problem so this is we have a one problem since you 
except someone, you know, he or she is your guru, since for you, all the action, if you accept all the action is good action, is no good. You must respect to the teacher. Also, you must pick pawn, you know, ping pong the, uh, the falsy and problem. You correct uh, the, the mistake. At the same time, you must respect to the teacher. Therefore, not only the teacher, the excellent teaching. So teacher and teaching, we must, you know, we highly respect the teacher and uh, teaching of the teacher. But today, this day, we Buddhist people, we highly respect to the guru or the teaching. We really care the guru or the teaching. What Buddha said, you should not rely on the person, rely on the teaching. You should not rely on the teaching, you rely on the meaning. You not only just rely on the meaning, you rely, rely on the, the fine, the finest the meaning, which is emptiness. You should listen reverently to the doctrine. So when you listen teaching, you, you teaching, you listen respectfully to the doctrine and also impart it to other. So you receive you know, a lot of teachings from your master, your guru, not just only receive, you apply the teaching in your daily life. Then you, you feel, you have the experience, you know, all the teaching you receive from the teacher, you practice in your daily life, you, you feel it's really benefit you. You feel it is a you know, great benefit for you. Then, also input it to other. So this is, uh, I think, quite important. First, you lessen the teaching, then reflect on the meaning, then apply yourself until you have the experience, then the experience, the knowledge, the teaching that you, in, you know, input, you share it to other. But today, another problem we have, so this morning, let's say, you know, morning you attend a teaching from certain Shifu master, whoever, the evening you share the teaching to others, but you, you yourself, you don't have any experience, even though you don't have a proper understanding the teaching, but you are very happy to share. And also like same way, so you met a, like say, uh, master or Rinpoche or Geshe or reincarnation. You met just for bring your friend to meet the Rinpoche. In the morning you met the Rinpoche. Since you are really, you know, promoting the Rinpoche and Geshe and master and she, oh, he or she is very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. But you don't have the understanding of the value of the teacher's quality. You never think, you know, the quality of the teacher, the quality of the, his teaching, you just attach the name, Geshe, like a Rinpoche, or, you know, seventh reincarnation, 20 reincarnation, 40 reincarnation, you just attach the name. You don't have a, you know, the proper uh, understanding of the, of the master, particularly you don't understand the the quality of the master, quality of this teaching. Therefore, also, you know, input it to other until you have an experience, you have the proper knowledge, you have the proper, you know, understanding information, the guru and master, then you can share. Because one of my friends, so uh, last time I was in Singapore, my, some of my friends, you know, they, they went to India, Somehow they met, you know, some lama on the roadside. Then they maybe say discuss a little bit. Then they went for tea. Then they sending me a lot of pictures. Oh, I met this number this geshe. Oh, this geshe is so good. This is this 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 this. I thought, oh, poor. I said, no, what's the name? I said, oh, poor da 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 da. So 
first you must have an experience. For example, so yeah, when we do when we go to certain supermarket, they, they are doing, you know, promoting the food, fruits, you know, candy, so and so. So before we buy it, buy it, they ask you, they ask us to test how the fruits look like, how is the, you know, like the things is look like. They, they ask you test. When we test, we thought, wow, well, is that the test is really good, very yummy. Then we buy it. So something we have to do, you know, rely on the teacher, rely on the teaching, you know, sharing the teaching to other, we must have experience. Then 266, take no pleasure in the worldly talk. Take delight in what passes beyond the world. Cause good quality to grow in other. In the same way, you wish them for yourself. So, you know, take note, should not be just, you know, waste your time. Should not talk too much about, you know, the samsari things. Oh, this good, that bad, this is, don't talk too much. Also, particularly, we always interfere with these people, that people, that people, this people, this society, this so this center, this center, that is too much interferes between others. But also with too much, you know, talk about other, particularly we always very happy to talk about the worldly things. Therefore, take no pleasure in worldly talk. Take delight in what passes beyond the world. If you really want to talk, if you really want to discuss with your friend, your Dharma friend, just talk how to control anger, how to control attachment, how to reduce emotional problem, how to go beyond the samsara. It's a meaningful talk, meaningful, you know, things. But we always talk about, you know, others. Also, when we, let's say we, we talk, let's say one hour, you, you talk with your friends or family for one hour. Within the one hour, I don't think you talk, you have a talk about which is important issue for your family. It is very important for your life. We always interfere here and there. To take delight in what passes beyond the world. Cause good quality to grow in others. In the same way, you wish them for yourself. Please do not satisfy it with the doctrine heard, but return and discriminate the meaning. Please always be intent on offer present to the teachers. Therefore, first line, please do not be satisfied with the doctrine heard. But we need to hear the teaching. Then we need to reflect on the meaning. Then we need to apply the meaning. Then we need to meditate on the meaning. There's a three, you know, like order. Listening or hearing, the reflection on it, then apply the meaning. But most of us, almost 90%, you know, our friends, they're very just satisfied, you know, hear the teaching. We never reflect, you know, again and again on the meaning. We never ever try to apply the meaning. Just satisfy, you know, hear the teaching. Then, please, the last sentence, you know, please always be intent on offering present to the teachers. Then when, we, when you see the line offering present to the teacher, you're always thinking, you know, they're offering food and clothes and money and, you know, watch and mobile and things, so and so. No. There's a two kinds of offering, the physical offering, the non-physical offering. The non-physical offering is you can offer, you can share your daily practice to your guru. You can share your daily, you know, uh, ex dharma experience with your teacher. When you are offering, you know, your present, the best present 
you're offering to the teacher. What uh, Mila Lama, uh, then, uh, Mila Deepa said, in practitioner, she said, I don't have uh, any the physical thing offered to you, my in my father, you know, spiritual father. I don't have uh, any physical thing to offer to you. My spiritual father always please offering the practice. Therefore, today I will offer my practice. Uh, there it doesn't mean the physical offering. Please always be intent on offering present to the teacher. If the teacher is very genuine, excellent, pure teacher, teacher is very, very, you know, please about your sharing your Dharma experience. The teacher is very happy when you share your experience, your study, the teacher feels extremely happy. If the teacher is not so happy, you know, when you share your experience, okay, okay, good, 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 good. But the teacher is very happy, extremely happy when you offer you know, the physical things. I mean, the teacher can, you know, cannot be the excellent teacher. Therefore, the last you know thing you're offering the physical things. Here I must say, because uh, I I've been in you know I let's say I st have been staying still I mean physically I mean India in the Yudha Monastery, the mentalist I connect with the Tibetan Buddhist Center, connect with Singapore. And I've been in Singapore for more than eight years. For me. For me, I really doesn't have a, any, you know, sense of differentiation, sense of discrimination. Oh, this person always asks me to go for lunch and dinner. This person never asks me, you know, go for coffee, dinner. I don't like this person. I like this person very much. I don't have. Also, I don't have, you know, discrimination or uh, and differentiate. Oh, these people always bring me give an offering or oh, those people never be anything for me these people are my close friend those people are you know my distant friend no for me is i always have a you know equanimity towards those people who knows me who know me some of you know the, our, our dharma friend always try to you know like a cares me which is a really appreciate but from my side is i have a equal you know thoughts for all the people who come to see me who attend my class whether you are rich whether you are middle class whether you are poor whether even though even though you never you know bring me any like little gift for me is sin. Then do not decide the book of worldly nihilist and so forth. Forsake debating in the interest of pride. Yes, first, you know, until you have a very stable mind, until you have very profound understanding of Dharma, then it's okay. You can read in any religious book. If your mind is not so stable, if you don't have a you know, deep understanding of Buddha teaching, then if you are going to read, you have been reading other Dharma book, then your mind can be you know convert, or your mind have a, a funny thoughts. Even in the Buddha lifetime, Buddha give a permission, Shariputra is okay. You can read you know the any of the Hindu's uh, religious book. But Buddha never give permission for many monks until you have a you know a very frame and stable mind. Then the second line is also important for a sec debating in interest for pride. So in order to understand the Buddha teaching you know, deeply, profoundly, perfectly, we need to discuss. Also, we need to do the debating 
we need to do debate. So in the monastery, Tibetan monastery, you can see, you know, uh, there's a lot of, the, most of the uh, uh, Akosera, Dibunga, then, you know, all the monastery has a two times debate class in the morning, in the evening. In the Gudun monastery, we always have a evening debate class, except, you know, on holiday. So when we debating about certain matter, certain meaning, the debate cannot be caused to increase your pride. Likewise, we need to study. We need to study for many, many years. The more you study, the more you gain knowledge. The knowledge makes sure not going to cause to increase your pride. Instead of increase pride, you know, cause must cause to reduce your pride. Otherwise, all the dharmas supposed to, you know, cause to reduce negative thoughts, but it is is, is caused to increase the negative thoughts, mean the dharma turn, turn into poison. Then the dharma is totally become very harmful for you. If you have a this kind of experience, the more you study dharma, your anger is you know, increasing, attachment increasing, your pride is you know, increasing, then it's be, better to stop studying dharma. Do not, you know, praise your own good qualities. Speak of the good quality, even of your force. So, we, you know, if you are really high practitioner, you should not, you know, praise your own good quality. What kind of good, good, good quality you have? What kind of dharma knowledge you have? What kind of things you know? Always be humble. Remember uh, the Edward says, Mantani. <laughs> Let you know, remember the verses. Whenever I interact with someone, may I view myself as the lowest among all. And from the very depth of my heart, respectfully hold other as, you know, superiors. You know, that means we always have a view ourselves in the lowest among all. That means be humble. Then physically, you have to be very humble. As many people try to physically humble, but mentally, not easy to be humble. Right? Therefore, speak of good quality, even of your force. So the, if you talk, you, you, if you pray, you know, praise your quality, it can be caused to increase your uh, pride. It can be caused to have, you are going to gain name and fame. The speak of good quality, even of your force, I told you, right? So somehow due to the misunderstanding, due to the miscommunication, your friend become your enemy somehow, then you must stop the talking the bad quality about your friends or you know, any of the other who become your enemy. Stop talking the bad qualities. Stop spread, you know, you know, spreading the, the good quality. Just stop and keep quiet. If you really want to spread, if you really want to talk, Talk about the good qualities. Talking the good quality can be cause your enemy become your friend. So we have a very bad habit. Once someone becomes your enemy, you always talk about bad, you always talk bad things about the person. For you, the person have a only bad quality, has a bad quality. You, you, you for you, that person doesn't have a any good qualities, how come? When he or she or your friend, you can see only good things. Since become enemy, you can see only the bad things. Then you have become very extreme. Therefore, you know, 
if someone become your enemy or he or she already become your enemy, there's no point to talk about it, the spread the bad things, just be quiet. If you want, then talk about the you know, qualities, good quality, even of your force. When debating, do not attack on quick, do not talk about others with bad intent. So we, when we do the debate, we're not going to debate, you know, attack or, you know, uh, deep, bring down to the person. We do the debate in order to clarify the misunderstanding, in order to have a deep understanding of the Dharma. Then don't talk about others. So why, you know, we human, I don't think in other sentient being, you know, talking about other, you can see, you know, like uh, in the forest, the, all the lions, when they, you know, fulfill their stoma, they just, you know, lay down and sleep for a long time. When they walk up and they're hungry and go and search food, so sometimes they, you know, you know, farting each other. Even the dog and cats and you know, all, they just search food, fulfill their stomach, fulfill their hungry, they just be happily sleep here and there. We human have a very bad habit. We have everything. We have a food, we have a clothes, we have a job, we have a money, we have a house, we have a everything. Then still we're talking too much for, about others. Why? Why? Why we talk about too much for others? Can we get any benefits? It can benefit for others? No, it's just waste, wasting your time, wasting your energy. Instead of talking you know, about others, recite mantra, recite manipayme, read dharma books, you know, visualize the Buddha and Bodhisattva, and you know, use the time in the meaningful way. Particularly, you know, many of our friends, when they, they, when they gather somewhere, even though someday we go for lunch and dinner and breakfast or coffee, we are just, they are not just enjoying the food on the table, they are comparing. Oh, this curry like that, but other students, this, 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 this. Oh, this is a price, this is other, this is this price. Why? So when we are in the place, whatever food comes, we just appreciate the people who cook for us, just enjoy whatever come on the table, don't compare this food and that food. Don't compare this, don't compare this coffee and that coffee. If you doing kind of certain uh, kind of uh, study about food and that, then you can compare with this good, that bad. So we talk too much, which is not important, not useful or sad, not useful for others. Therefore, don't talk about other with bad intention. Individually, always your own mistake yourself. That means you should not, don't talk about other, you talk yourself. Am I a good person or not? When you ask question yourself, if you realize, oh, I'm not really a good person, you try to change yourself. Don't try to change others. First you change yourself, other people will change. The individually, always your own mistake, right? If you always watch your own mistake, then one day you become very pure. When you, you, you become very pure, many people follow after you. Individually, you know, you should not just say, oh, I'm I a bad person, I have a bad habit. What kind of bad habit I have? What kind of, you know, kinds of negative thoughts I have? you know, watch individually and pick upon the, you know, mistake, correct the mistake, try to be a better person, try to be a happy person. Therefore, you know, analyze your own mistake, you know, yourself. Now we can say, don't talk about other with a bit, you know, bad intention. Individually, analyze my own mistake, myself. Because this is Nagarjuna teaching to the king. <coughs> 270, best uh, number. Two seventy. You should root out completely from yourself. The false, the vice, uh, 
decay in other and throw your influence also cause other to do the same thing. Right? Therefore, so when you analyze your, yourself, you realize your mistake, correct the mistake, then slowly you can change at the end, you, you completely will change. Then you can influence other. Therefore, in the in the Singapore, somebody asked I think a few times, same question asked many people. As a Buddhist, how I can benefit my colleague? How I can benefit my dharma, my friends? They thought I'm Buddhist. I believe in Dharma. I must teach Dharma to my friends. I must teach Dharma to my friend. Then I said, no. You no need to teach Dharma to your friends, your clique. You act accordingly Dharma. Be honest. Be compassionate. Be truthful person. Be open-minded person. Then other people, you know, will follow you. If you teach Dharma, try to teach Dharma to them, if you try to explain Dharma, one day they're going to be fed up with you. But they, for example, Buddha Shakyamuni, so before he taught the Dharma, the six year, seriously, he went through a lot of hardship. That means for the six year, he was doing analyzing, he was practicing Dharma until he fully realized until you fully, you know, uh, uh, enlightened person, then he taught the Dharma. We have to be follow Buddha Shakyamuni. Then considering the harm other do to you, this also is a very common uh, problem we have. Considering the harm other do to you, located by your former deeds, do not anger, act such as that further suffering will not be created and your own faults will disappear. Let's say somebody harm you. Somebody harm you sometime. Somebody always try to harm you, have been harming you. You should not get angry to the person who harm you, who have been harming you. What we need to consider the harm other do to your do to you. So the person harm me, the person not happy with me. It is not his or her problem, it is my problem. How do to you as created by former in you know, a former deeds? In the past, I accumulate a lot of negative karma. Maybe in the past I harm them. Now the, you know the, the harming cycle is come. This therefore, if somebody harm you, instead of getting anger, you analyze. You should think is it due to me, it's due to, not due to that. No, not anger. Act such as that further. If you get anger you know, somebody harm you, if you get very angry, you, you become very angry, the anger increase. Then the act such as that further suffering, we have a more suffering. If you don't get angry, the further suffering will not be created. And your own faults will disappear. Here you need to remember what Chandrakirti said in the interim middle way. Somebody harm you, somebody beat you, you have a you have a very strong pen for you know pens full out on your body. If you fight back, the pen full in your body, you, know, you never go away. Somebody you know, you know, hit you, cut your air, you know, cut your arm. If you cut other people's arm and air, your air never come back. The womb never going to heal. Therefore, be patient, reflect your karmic karma. Considering the harm other do to you, 
uh, created by your former deeds, you know, anger, such that further suffering will not be, if you be, ang you know, be patient, do not anger, then the further suffering will not be created and your own faults will disappear. Then, true 72, without hope of revert, revert, provide help to other. So, if you want to do the pure, you know, practice of generosity, you really want to do, you know, pure helping other, should not have a hope of revert. Oh, I give this to the person, the person will, you know, return to me. You should not have any revert of hope, hope of revert. Provide help to others. Then the, the second and third line, bear suffering alone and share your pleasure with beggars, I mean share with others. When you have a suffering, so you need to bear your physical suffering, mental suffering. If you have a physical suffering, if you share your physical suffering with anybody, if physical suffering not, no goes away, you're always there. If you have a mental suffering, emotional suffering, you cannot share your emotional suffering. You can talk, but it doesn't you know, benefit for you know, reducing your emotional suffering. Therefore, so bear your suffering alone. If you have physical suffering, you know, practice dharma, try to reduce the physical suffering. Of course, we everybody have a emotional and mental suffering. Apply the dharma, reduce, eliminate the suffering. Then the pleasure and happiness we must share with beggar. I mean, all sentient beings are beggar for happiness. They are looking, they are searching, they always you know, wish to get suffering. That means we all a beggar, beggar of happiness and pleasures. And share your pleasure with beggars. Then stanza number all the way to 74. Do not be infiltrated even by the poverty of gods. So let's say due to your you know luck, due to your effort, due to Let me check the time. <clears throat> okay. Then do not be infected even by the poverty of your, you know, poverty you know, prosperity of God. Due to your luck, due to your effort, you know, by chance, somehow, you know, you have a lot of wealth. You become, you know, richer and richer. You have everything. But do not be infected. You should not think, I'm the one, I'm the boss. You know, I have everything. I can abuse everybody. Therefore, do not be infected, even by prosperity of gods. It's, it's not only the prosperity, let's say you are more educated than other, do not be infected. You are more wise and in more intelligent, be intelligent, do not be infected. You appreciate your wise and intelligence, you must appreciate your successful life, but do not be infected. So today, you know, many people have this problem when they become, you know, like successful, successful, intelligent, wise, rich, you know, have everything, then they have very strong kind of pride, ego. Then they bully other directly and indirectly. Then second and third line, do not be depressed, you know, de uh, depressed, depressed, even by the poverty of hunger goes. 
Maybe again, do to your love. You do to your, you know, like a no effort, do to whatever condition, you become very poor. Like you look like you become like hungry ghost. No food, no clothes, no shelter, but do not be, you know, depressed. To depress. Again, you need to reflect on your, you know, the former or previous life karma. And also, you, you today you are very successful. Maybe tomorrow you are beggar. Today you are beggar. Tomorrow you you must, you can be rich. Or today you don't know much. Tomorrow you you will know. You will know more. Therefore, do not be infected and do not be you know depressed. Become poor. No. So even though you have everything, one day when you live, you have to live alone. Doesn't matter how many servants and friends and family you have, nobody going to go with you. You have everything, you cannot bring anything, even though the physical body. Then when you become, you know, like a very poor, there's no point to, you know, depress. One day we have to leave, we have to leave everything behind. Then to 74, for your sake, always speak the truth, even should it cause your death. Right? So it is important to be truthful person. It is very important always speak the truth. The truthful, be honest for me, is look like foundation. It look like a heart for everybody. If you are human, yes, we are human being. If you have a truthful, if you are a truthful person, if you are a very honest person, you have a heart. If you are very, you know, like a no truthful person, you are always lying here and there. You don't have an actual heart. So even though, should it cause your death, always speak the truth, be truthful. Always be honest. Even the cause your death is okay. Or ruin your governance, do not speak in any other ways. Even though you know, if I, you know, if I speak, if I speak like a, if I lying, if I don't speak the truthful, I know I'm going to ruin my governance. Then, but, but he said, Nagarjuna said, do not speak any other way. So let the ruin your governance. Because ruins your governance is only this life. So here, what Buddha said in the Vinaya, if you uh, destroy your, uh, if you Oh, if you kill yourself, if you killed yourself, you're killing, you are just one life. If you destroy your uh, Vinaya law, your vows, look like you're going to have a suffering force many, 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 many lifetime. The same thing. In order to protect your governance, your, your country, whatever, protect your family, protect your fund, but if you speak, you know, like a, if you're lying, you speak, you know, untruthful, is bring a lot of suffering for this life and the next life. Always absorb the discipline of action just as it has been explained. So we always absorb the discipline, we always watch our mind. Because what Buddha asked to do, we must do, to make sure we have been doing or not. Absorb our, you know, our discipline, make sure what Buddha asked not to do, make sure we are not doing, we have not have been doing. So always absorb the discipline 
of action just as has been explained. That means everybody act, take action what you know Buddha's what Nagarjuna explained in the previous chapter. In the way, in that way, you know, if you act, if you always observe your discipline of action just as it has been explained in, in that way, O oh, glorious one, you will become the best of the authority beings upon the earth. That means you become one look like the king of the earth. You should always analyze well everything before you act and thoughts seeing, thinking correctly as they are, do not put for lies on others. Okay, you should always analyze well everything before you act. Yes? So many people has a fighting argument with the family. Then in Singapore, many people come to see me. Oh, I have this problem. This problem. I, you know, I could not say, but I too late. Therefore, you should always analyze well, not analyze, well analyze everything before you act. Speak to others, saying to something, even though aging, drinking, you know, buying, whatever things, you should always analyze well everything before you act. Sometimes we don't think, you know, we, should, we don't analyze well, we bought things quite expensive. After that, you have a very, you know, strong disappointment. Also, we can see, you know, many people, before they eat, they never analyze, should I eat or not? How much I should eat? Then, you can see many people, you know, put on, put, you know, put weight on. They feel, oh, I'm so fatty. I want to reduce. Therefore, this line is we can apply for all the actions, eating, drinking, speaking, talking, walking, whatever action you should analyze, always analyze well, everything before you act. And, and through seeing things correctly as they are, do not put full reliance on others. Therefore, through seeing things correctly, as they are, then act. Do not put full reliance on others. But somebody said we should not rely on. We need to analyze. We need to see things clearly, correctly, as they are, then you take action. Through the practice, your, uh, your realm will be happy. So if you be honest, before you act, always you know, analyze well. Things see correctly and then take action and act after you seeing things correctly. Then through this practice, mainly, you know, be honest, you know, speak truthful. Through this practice, you, your realms will be happy wherever you stay. Realm is the place where you stay. You always be happy. A board uh, can be of the fame that you, you can have a lot of, you know, like you become famous, many people respect you. Will rest in all directions, and your officially will respect your you fully. The cause of the death are many; those of staying live are few. Those two can become cause of the death. Therefore, always perform the practice. Then, why we need to be honest? Why we need to speak truthful? Why we need to be you know honest? Why? Why we need to analyze. Therefore, the last is kind of conclusion. Somehow, so we have to leave this world. The death will come. Will come, definitely come, come anytime, come for anybody, even though you are young, you are healthy, you are rich, you are poor, but you, the death will come. Definitely come. Come anytime, can be come anytime come for everybody. Therefore, the cause of the death are many. Generally, it's many. These days, a lot more. Because we, you know, we have been eating, we have to buy all the products produced by the company. So we really don't know what kind of, you know, the food product. 
melt off. What kind of thing this needs? Therefore, the cost of the debt become more and more, more and more. Finally, look like all the food and drink going to be you know, cost, cost for our debt. Those of the staying live are very few. You know, that, that things can be caused to live long life is very few. Food can be become poison. The medicine can become your poison. The place you live, you're going to clap. The, the, you know, the, the transportation we use is can have an accident, is can have a fire. So uh, those of the staying life are very few. These two can become cause of the death. Uh, that means uh, staying life is very few. That uh, the cause of the deaths are many. These two, which is the staying life are very few. This can be caused to live long life. In life. But this also can be cause of the death, like a healthy food. You know, somebody want to always want to eat healthy food. Sometimes the healthy food can be caused to your death. Therefore, always perform the practice. Therefore, always do dharma practice. Be honest, you know, be speak truthful, control your negative thought, inhale your positive thought. Then when we die, we can die happily. Therefore, always perform the practice. After we death, then we can have a very fortunate, you know, fortunate life, many, many lifetime. If you always perform Thus, the practice, the mental happiness which arises, right? If you practice dharma purely, correctly, I say purely, correctly, not the nonsense thing. Then the mental happiness which in arises. How? It's not just saying. For example, you are a very angry person. If you practice purely, correctly, compassion, anger going to reduce. Then you feel very peaceful, you feel happiness, then happiness increases. You have a very attachment, excessive attachment. You know, reflect, remember, you know, the suffering you have in the past due to the attachment. If you apply the correct antidotes, if you practice the correct pure dharma to reduce attachment, then you know that. The mental happiness arise. There's no doubt. In the world and in yourself, the most favorable, the bigger happiness is, is the most important for everybody. Through the practice, you will sleep happily and will awake happily. So most people, you know, say, Oh, I have a sleeping problem. I cannot sleep well. I, I you know, I wake many times, you know, in the in the night time. It can be like can be two possibility. One, you have a sudden issue in your body. You have a sudden sickness. Most people cannot sleep well. I wake many many times because you have an emotional problem. You have a mental suffering. Therefore, you cannot sleep well. So when you wake up, the first time we remember all the problems and sufferings. For example, morning you have a argument and fighting with someone, the whole day your energy is very down. Then you don't want to sleep because you cannot sleep. You want to watch movie, you want to play a game, you want to chit chat with someone. Then you try to sleep, you cannot sleep. Due to tiredness, if you feel fall asleep, you awake quickly and remember the argument, all the you know, unpleasant things. If you control your negative thoughts, you know, and you will sleep happily and will awake happily because your inner nature will be without, you know, defect. Even your dream will be happy. So you can see, you know, we, what most of the dream we have, we have done in the past. Some of the we can remember, some of we cannot remember. The most important here, because your inner nature will be without defect. That means, let's say your inner world is look like environment. If you protect the inner environment, 
Right? Then the in, inner environment is a very beautiful, very clean, is growing beautiful flowers. So inner, the, the our mind, the inner world is look like other than space or place. If you don't protect, the, 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 the inner world is going to ruin, is grow all kinds of poison flower, poison fruits, different kinds of insect, all of them together destroy the inner world. Then externally, you try to eat healthy food, you try to wear expensive clothes, we try to eat healthy food, we never be happy because the inner world is totally, you know, continues have been ruined because of the, all the negative thoughts. Therefore, we cannot sleep well, we cannot have it happily. So your, the, even your dream will be happy. Intent on, for example, this one, I think we can put an you know, example, Israel Dalam as example. So we, everybody has a jet lag, right? So you, when you fly from Asia to Europe and America, it's totally, it's changed like a opposite. So you reach to Europe and America at nighttime, you cannot sleep. When the sun rises, we fall asleep. We cannot adjust the uh, jet lag. He is the Lama, he traveled all over the world. He, he, let's say he flew from India to US, Europe. He's totally opposite timing. So since he reached, maybe he has a just maybe like a short, simple, you know, snack or tea or breakfast, simple. He started giving teaching. You know, he start meeting people. He start, he, he, you know, he start to, you know, giving advice, many people. But when he meet people, he was very fresh because he had, he control all the negative thoughts. The inner world is very clean and very peaceful. Even though on the plan, he can sleep well, he can awake happily. When he reach to the destination, he are ready to give a talk. We, we need few days to adjust the jet lag. Even your dream will be happy. To everyone, intent or saving your pet also, intent on serving your parents, respectful to the principle of your lineage, using your resource well, patient, generosity with kindly speech without uh, diverse uh, diversiveness and truthful so this one we can talk next on like next sunday the first line to 81 intent on serving your parents first even though in the abhidharma gosha you know, the master explained very often respect your parents, cares your parents, care the patients, you know, like patient. So sometimes we don't care, we don't serve our parents, but we are very care our guru, Rinpoche, Lama, Shifu, my friends, and those and those. You don't have a really sense of caring for your parents. Also, many people say, oh, my father is no good, my mother is not good, so last, last time or last year, he or she did this, 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 this. You remember, you always remember what your parents have done in you know, a bed for you. But we never ever remember, we never ever recall what are the best you know, facility they provide for you how many years and months they cares us. We count certain problem issue, then we say, my parents are no good, my father not good, I had my parents is no good. Intent on serving your parents. Okay, now <coughs> we can, I can stop our class here. I think I, I got a phone call from the office, I'm not sure, that you trace holiday. Anyway, I think, so we have a class on Sunday or on next Sunday. Okay, everybody. So thank you so much for attending the class. Whatever you know, I, I explain. You don't just you know close the book and put in the 
on the table, put in the almaris, put on the shelf. Please read sentence by sentence and try to you know, practice as much as you can. And next Sunday when we meet, you can you need to feel whatever I explain. You need to feel, oh, I apply for six days. For the six day, I have a peaceful mind. I have a you know happy time. So try to experience the result of your daily practice. Okay, thank you so, so much, Sonam. So I chant the dedication in Tibetan. Everybody do dedications. Whatever merit we have, we have accumulated this morning. Whatever merit we have accumulated, we accumulate in the past. All the marriage together in our hands, in our minds. First, we dedicate achieving our Sebi Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. <laughs> Whatever merit we have accumulated. Second, we dedicate to benefit all sentient beings without exception. <laughs> 